All right, what's up everyone? Dave here, another exciting tutorial. And today I wanna to talk about color management. And what the heck is that? Well, in Maya, uh, there's something called color space right here. So anytime you plug in a file, uh, there's color space and you get all these different choices. So it's like, well, what the heck? What, what is this for? Why do I need to do that? Um, do I need to do that? And what if it's grayed out? What if I don't even have access to it? So I'm going to cover all that. And then I'm also going to show how to um, plug in files and then adjust it. So let's take a look at some things here. So first of all, if this is grayed out and you don't even have access to it, you're going to want to go into your window settings preferences preferences then in here you want color management uh, if enable color management is off then what's going to happen is it's going to um, you can see it kind of also affects that but if I go into my materials now and if I if I look at the materials so if I go in here um, and if I click on this you can see that I don't even have access to this. So you want to make sure that you have color management enabled. And when you have color management enabled, you should now have access to this. Okay, there, I have access to it, and it's gonna work out. So let's kind of talk about the base rules here of when do I do it, um, and why do I do it? Well, first of all, the why is because if you don't do it, it's not going to look right, okay? So I think that's the easiest way to think about it. But um, let's talk about when to do it and when not to do it. So, okay, so in color, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and go to, let's say here. So color, this is going to be sRGB, okay? S RGB and we'll get to that in a second and then everything else everything else is going to be raw okay so sRGB for color and then everything else to, to raw and you might be saying well Dave what the heck that doesn't make any sense what are you even talking about um, well let's let's just get right into it so if I go back to this um, I, I don't have the materials for the basket done um, or applied. So realize all the, all the textures are from Substance Painter. So if I go in here, um, I'm going to go ahead and give the basket. Um, so if I select the basket, I'm going to give it an AI standard surface. Okay. And now if I come here, I'm going to go to color. And I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to choose Basket Base Color. Okay, yeah, Basket Base Color. Now, once again, because that was sRG, um, because it was color, I'm going to leave this at sRGB. Now I'm going to click Back, so I'm going to click on this icon right here. Uh, so once again, that's sRGB. Now all other maps that I put in are going to be set to Raw. So I'm going to start with Metalness. and basket metallic okay now once again I'm gonna set this to raw and when I set it to raw I also want to go down here to color balance and make sure that alpha is luminance is checked once again if you don't do this it's not gonna look correct okay uh, so raw and alpha is luminance now I'm gonna go back up here go back and I'm gonna plug in roughness so I'm gonna go here plug in my roughness and then I'm gonna go here I'm gonna do basket roughness okay. and now I'm gonna switch this to raw and alpha's luminance is checked okay now I'm gonna go back again and I'm gonna put in the last one if I open up geometry, I'm going to go to bump mapping. I'm going to go to file. And I want to make sure that this is set to tangent space normals. 
and then I'm going to go here. Okay. Now I may be saying, well, Dave, I'm going to outsmart you. I don't want to forget. I'm going to switch this to raw first. Now watch what happens if you switch this to raw first and then you put on the file. So basket normal. It goes in, but I feel like Maya just hates us. Maya makes this work really hard. So once this loads and just taking a little bit of time to load, once it loads, it's going to automatically switch this color space back to sRGB. Okay, so I can see that it's loading. You can see that it automatically switched it. So if we didn't notice that, we'd be out of luck. You can see how the basket looks weird just because I don't I didn't follow those rules. So I'm going to switch it here. Now it's going to stay, and you'll see that the basket will look better in a second. Um, I think it's a little slow because it's trying to update at the same time that I'm doing this. You can see that it looks better now. And I also want to make sure that alpha is luminance is checked. Okay. Now you might be saying, well, that's all good, but I've got a lot of materials on here. How am I going to kind of organize and keep track of all of that? Well, I'm just going to hit stop for a second here, and I'm going to go into my hypershade. And here is the frame of the motorcycle material. I can click on the input output connections. And now what this is showing me is this is the material of the frame of the motorcycle. And then these are the files. This is the roughness file, the base color, the normal, and the metallic. And if I click on this, right here conveniently, it gives me just what I need. I can see the color space and alpha's luminance. So I can see that the, uh, the bike roughness is set to raw and alpha luminance is checked. Base color, sRGB. Normal, raw, alpha luminance. Metallic, raw, alpha luminance. That's good. Now if I had another one, here's the motor. Um, I can just click on this and it's going to update this. Okay, so now what I can do is I can say, okay, here's the normal map, raw, alpha luminance. Base color, sRGB, raw alpha's luminance, raw alpha is luminance. Okay, so you can see how fast it is to, um, to check your materials. Now, um, I would have to go through and, and I would want to make sure all my materials are named so I could check them easily like this. Okay, the other thing is that, let's say for whatever reason, you know, I want to look at my motor material and then I want to look at my frame material. I could click on the new tab right here and then I could go frame and I could click on input output connections. Now I could toggle back and forth if I wanted to, for whatever reason, check out both of them. Um, and so if you go to one and it deletes the other one and, and shows the new one, it's not really deleting it. Obviously, it's just kind of you're just kind of showing whatever you want to look at here. Um, the other thing with this color management system, OK, and this is uh, kind of falls in the same category, is that I'm going to close this. And if I did a real render of this, okay, so if I hit render, uh, this might take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to pause the video. Okay, you can see that I saved you 30 seconds of your life not watching that render. And if I come up here, this is actually uh, color management right here, this on. So there's a couple different color managements. I feel like color managements with the files that we're putting in here, and I want you to think about it this way. If color is important, we're going to keep it at sRGB. That's why we put color at sRGB. And color is not important for all these other ones. It's basically a grayscale that's driving the effectiveness of that particular channel. So that's why all of those are set to raw. You could, okay. Now, with maybe one exception here, so an admission. I can see that like a, if you have emissive lights or something, um, because the color is important, uh, you, you would want to keep that set to sRGB, okay? But once again, color is not, oh, I'm sorry, um, on all these other ones, color is not important. That's why it's set to raw, okay? But a few other things here is that this is a form of color management, and if I turn it off, it's going to look really dark because there's no color management. And if I turn it on, that is color managed. Now, even though we're seeing it here, if you go to File, Save Image, you might do all this work. And if you save it, it might come out super dark. And you're like, wait, what the heck? 
And if you're not looking at your files, you're like, oh, screw it. It just took me too long anyway. I'm just going to keep it like that. But what's happening here is if you go like this, save image, you want to make sure that this is set to color managed. If you set it to raw, it'll look as dark as that does with this off. If you set it to color managed, it's going to look exactly like what we're seeing here. So I feel like that is something else you have to be aware of. Okay, now what's even worse is if you have this um, set to raw here, and if you do like a turntable, all of it's going to be it's all going to be dark. It doesn't matter how light it's showing here. If it's color managed here, it doesn't matter. It matters really what your kind of your save mode is here. Okay. The other thing is, I guess, if you went like this, save image. Yeah, you can also check it right here. So if you didn't go to the um, option box, and then also in your render settings. In your render settings, um, the color management, well, let me see. Okay, so it says the color space right here. You can see um, it says use view transform or use output transform. So I feel like um, using the view transform, I, I believe that's what I'm saying is right here. Okay, whatever you have selected here. Um, for that. Now, once again, I know that's kind of not that exciting to think about. Um, and there is one exception to this rule. Okay, remember I said color is going to always be sRGB, and then anything that's not color is going to be raw. Well, there is one exception. Um, this image-based lighting that I have on here, you can see this globe. If I click on this, you'll notice that I put a, a color or map to file onto color and this is a color image however the color space is set to raw and you would think that it would be set to sRGB well the reason that this is set to raw is because this is an EXR file so what the heck is that well an EXR file is a 32-bit image and I'll probably do a video at some point about 32-bit image, uh, what that means. But basically, um, a 32-bit image is a more complex kind of color image that doesn't need to be set to sRGB. It, can, it has to be set to uh, RAW. Um, and when I say you could also set it, anytime you set it to RAW, you could, I feel like you could also set it to linear. It doesn't really matter. Um, but, I, but I'm just going to keep it at raw. Um, so once again, that's the exception to the rule. So um, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that didn't make it more confusing. But I think that if nothing else, just kind of write those things down and take notes of that and then just follow it. And I think what will happen is that your renders will look better because of it. Um, and then later you can kind of like get into the details of why but i feel like don't focus necessarily on the why just kind of do it for now and like i said hopefully the renders look better so hopefully that was helpful uh put any questions or comments below thank you